Good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode 43 of the Stone Age Gamer Podcast. My name is Chris. I am, again, and still, your host for the evening. And with me tonight are Dan. Evening, everyone. Tiff. Oh, wait, no, she's not. She She's in bed. She hurt herself. Tiff, get better soon. We love you. I certainly do, but I signed a piece of paper that says I have to. <laughs> I didn't sign <coughs> shit, and I'm refusing to love. <laughs> and speaking of refusing to love, Dean. Hi, everyone. Nope, not nothing crazy. I spent my crazy this week, so uh, mm. did spend I'm going to be crazy normal. Talking to imaginary Kirby's, and I freaking dare you to be normal. He's fucking weird. <laughs> I, I'm I'm talking of myself in the third person, of course. Well. There it goes. Let's start the podcast. There we go. <laughs> Last week we talked about ga- uh, games that need new iterations for one reason or another. This week we're going to take a look at the other direction. While in many instances video game sequels are a very good thing, sometimes series just need to give it a rest. Because, <laughs> uh, well, they just need to. So each of us has chosen two different games and uh, that we feel need to stop. And we're going to talk about them right now. So, Dan, let's start with you. Well, I I, I would be remiss if I did not include uh, Tiffany's suggestions uh, for this evening. She was going to mention uh, either she was she was kind of flip flopping back and forth between either Halo or uh, Call of Duty at this point. Um, just insofar as the fact is, yes, these games are. They sell a bajillion copies every year, but it would be nice if they did something new every now and again. It, it's just the the rinse and repeat formula of these games has just gotten to the point where it's it really just feels like you're paying sixty bucks for DLC. In Halo's every year. defense, though, they have done quite a few different things. They've had a real time strategy game. They that no one liked the ODST. Yeah, they but had. You know what? At least they yeah. tried it. Like, look, yeah, I don't no, like sure, Halo sure. I'm with at you. all, but I don't put it on the same. It's not annual. It, like it's not Call, Call of Duty. Duty is. Yeah. yeah, right. And Call of Duty is certainly a much worse offender, and probably could do with a little bit of time off, so that we could maybe get excited about it again. Definitely agree with that. Um, and her other point was going to be the the idea that all indie games need to be sequelized things like like fez fez was a brilliant idea it was a shit show of a development but it was a brilliant idea and the game that came out of it was pretty charming and pretty lovely and then there was going to be fez too and it was like no you had a good idea leave it at your good idea that's that's really all you needed to do i would say that in that department i mean that's really such a case by case basis, you know. Like, sure. If if he had really good ideas for Fez Two, that could be something really special, you know. Like, I would love it if uh, Pixel would make a sequel to Cave Story, uh, or even Ikachan. But who knows? Like, if if he had a really good idea, like, does Cave Story need a sequel? Not necessarily. No. Like, it's a great standalone product, but. Would I say no to more of that game? Probably not, because right. know, it's it's and, it's great. And I th- I think that was that was more to her point of just when you have this really great idea and you have this really lovely experience, there's no point to sequelize it if if the ideas aren't there. Yeah, right. enough. And, and sometimes enough can they be are. Enough. Right, and you know you look at something like Costume Quest. Costume Quest was this really quirky little RPG that Double Fine put out. Uh, a couple years ago, and then this past year, it got a sequel. There was no more story to Costume Quest. It was done. It was over. It, mm-hmm. But the fact that there was a sequel was just kind of like, maybe you should have spent that time on Psychonauts 2. All <laughs> I'm saying. Yeah, I think that's that's that was kind of the, the thing I ran into a lot when coming up with my choices for this category was kind of like what we were mentioning in the intro in last week, is that for the most part, game sequels tend to be good things and and even sometimes surprisingly so like uh super mario galaxy 2 is a a great example of a a shocking shockingly good sequel because 
it came out relatively close to Mario Galaxy, and it looked at first glance like, oh, this is this is the sh shit you left out of Galaxy One, and it right. turned out to be, at least in my opinion, superior to the first one in every way. Uh, I just just knocked my socks off with the level of creativity. So, it, it's. It's a very, it's a difficult thing to look at, you know, besides the obvious, like, you know, I wish Tony Hawk Pro Skater would stop. Oh, wait, they did, so. <laughs> and I'm that, actually really excited it's coming back. Yeah, because that's how you do that, you know? You, right. you, 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 you wait a while, and then when a new iteration shows back up, it's something special, you know, because you've had time, not only have the developers had time to do something original with it, but you've had time to take away from it. So. Right, and anyway, to miss it. Yeah, so. Dan, on on to your on to your games. So, I know that I know that you, Chris, w when we were discussing this previously, were were somewhat surprised that this was the the game that I was going to go with, given my uh, unabashed love for this title, uh, for this series, for this franchise, and my defense of it. Uh, quite often on this show, I've come to the defense of this franchise uh but i really feel that in november i think it is right now of this year when metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain releases that that should be it i adore this series to unheard of levels this is usually between this and, like, Mega Man, I kind of flip-flop back and forth between what I would claim to be my favorite series at any given time. But it's usually Metal Gear Solid. Specifically Metal Gear Solid, but the Metal Gear franchise as a whole. Dating back to the original uh, in, like, 1987, 1988, whenever the somewhat bastardized... Well, I say somewhat. The really, really bastardized version of Metal Gear came out for the NES, the, the far superior MSX version uh, directed by Hideo Kojima, and we're not even going to mention Snake's Revenge, because that was a whole... Kojima had nothing to do with it. The far superior sequel came out on the MSX in like 1990, so you had a good three-year break there, and then it wasn't in, it, until like eight years later that you had Metal Gear Solid, which which, I mean, let's let's not make any mistake about it. Metal Gear Solid defined what PlayStation gaming was all about. Defined, I, I feel, kind of what the next generation of, of gaming was going to be stepping up into these newer consoles. And after Metal Gear Solid, the floodgates, they done opened, as it were. And there has been... A, a new Metal Gear Solid game pretty consistently, and a lot of them have been uh, terrible. Uh, they've just been really bad. I mean, when, when you get to the point in a franchise, a tactical espionage franchise, and you have a card-based game that gets a fucking sequel, I'm talking about Metal Gear Acid. You had to be on Acid to play it. You really did. I I fucking bought it because it was Metal Gear Solid, so of course I bought it. We all did. It I, came out with the PSP. It was just one of those things. You right. bought it because it said Metal Gear. Right. Did PSP you buy and Metal Acid Gear. Because I did. I no, didn't. I didn't. Because I'm not a fucking crazy person. Because the first one was so bad. Well, I mean, it the game so got really bad. had to have it. The, the, well, the no, game I know. got really good reviews though. That was the weird thing. Like I looked up like. It's, it's not a good. bad card game. It shouldn't have been a Metal Gear game. Why does it exist in the first place is the question. Right. And But anyway. I mean, and you've got, like, there's Metal Gear, like, and, and they they did redeem themselves somewhat with Metal Gear Portable Ops, but then there's Metal Gear Acid Mobile, and then Metal Gear Online, and Metal Gear Solid Touch, and Metal Gear Acid 2 Mobile, and... Metal Gear fucking arcade? Like, Metal Gear does not belong in an arcade. What the fuck are you doing? And the the problem is, is that the, the story in Metal Gear is is so bananas insane. It, like, it, it would take a good three-hour podcast to really delve into the story and really unpack 
everything that is involved in the Metal Gear franchise itself. It would take a three-hour podcast to watch the cutscenes in Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, but that's a very fair point. But I love the story. I love how over-the-top and insane it was. I love how much of this game is Kojima's vision. I really feel like this is one of the few franchises out there where Kojima is like, this is what we're fucking doing, and everybody else goes, yeah, I suppose so. And that's just what happens, for good, bad, or worse, that is what happens. I love the story in this game. And in Metal Gear Solid 4 for the PS3, it was it was done. It was, it was over. We told the story. We got through everything. Like, I really feel like... You had Metal Gear Solid, and it was great. Everybody loves Metal Gear Solid, because it's, it's an amazing game. It's an amazing experience. There's lots of just really interesting, innovative things within that game, and the story is really cool. And then you had Metal Gear Solid 2. That pissed everybody off, because who the fuck is Raiden, and why do I care? Where is Solid Snake? It was just... It was, it was the biggest letdown. It, the, the game could be, if you went back and looked at it objectively, the game itself could be the best game ever made, but the fact that there was the sleight of hand of the demo that everyone saw and the E3 trailer that everyone saw was really the only part that had Snake in it. Just It just made everybody angry, and rightfully so. You it are was genius. It was. It was absolutely brilliant, and it is a great game. It is. Metal, the problem Metal Gear Solid is that 2 is, brilliant. is a shitty character. Right, he sucks. If he had, if if they were, did the misdirect and it wasn't Snake, and then Raiden wasn't whiny Anakin Skywalker garbage, then it, it would probably still be one of my all-time favorite games. Should have been Gray Fox. It really should have been. Like, I mean, when you come right down to it, it really should have been. But Metal Gear Solid Three, then I feel totally redeemed the franchise. Metal Gear Solid Three is for my money the best the best entry in in the franchise. Metal Gear Solid 4 really kind of tied everything. Uh, it's it's just brilliant. And Metal Gear Solid 4 is uh, again in my opinion is, is just fucking outstanding and really tied everything together. And we told the story. We got the story of Snake, we got this new guy Raiden, we got Big Boss, and then we got Old Snake. With, you know, spoilers for a fucking 10-year-old game at this point. I don't know. When did Metal Gear Solid 3 come out? It was a while ago, right? Uh, you're probably close. I'd probably like, say uh, seven, About 10 years. years? Seven, eight years? Something like that? Let me look it up. I actually have it in front of me. 2004. So, okay. 11 years ago. Spoilers for an 11-year-old game. Big Boss is still around, too. We got the culmination of his story. We got the Patriots. We got the whole thing. And then Ground Zeroes. Which I still haven't played because I'm I'm going to play it with the Phantom Pain. It it doesn't it doesn't need to be there. Metal Gear Solid does not need to be an open world game. And when you start taking a franchise that is so so identified with one particular style of gameplay, and you change it, it's because you're out of ideas. And when you're out of ideas you should stop. You shouldn't continue and then possibly water down or alienate your franchise. I love this game so much and I love this franchise so much. And and I want it to be done. I've had enough of it. I agree. I think I don't necessarily think that it needs to be done forever, but I think no, there sure. needs to be another gap just like there was between the original Metal Gear, and that's the Metal Gear series, and then Metal Gear Solid. Like, first, you know, quick defense, original NES Metal Gear, sure, it was nothing compared to the MSX version, but we didn't know that existed back then, and NES Metal Gear was freaking cool. I still love it. I still but play through was, it once a year. It's, it's awesome, but that it's was one game. of the reasons that Metal Gear Solid was so amazing to people like us. Like, first off, it was amazing as its own thing. But it was even more amazing if you were a fan of Metal Gear back when it originally released. Because it tied into it. It did not forget that mythology. It brought it right along with it. And that kind of stuff is amazing. And that gap 
you know, Metroid did the same thing, you know? Right. Super Metroid, <laughs> there was a giant gap between Super Metroid and Metroid Prime and uh, Fusion. And when those two games came out, it was like, holy crap, there's new Metroid. Finally, we've been waiting for so long. But also, it was so good, and it was made that much sweeter because it was given that time to breathe. There was time for us to really want it. And Metal Gear, like you said, since Metal Gear Solid, there has been a steady stream of Metal Gear products since. And there's always the next Metal Gear on the horizon, and that's taken away that real craving for it. You know, like, they don't make that many Zelda games, which is why when they come out, they're that anticipated. You know, they're like six or seven years apart for the most for the most part. And right. that's because... It's that's how they're designed to, to work that way, and that's why they're so sought after, is because there's this long wait between them, and there's usually something fresh involved in them. So I, I want to see Metal Gear go on hiatus, and then come back like eight or nine years from now under new direction, and sh shake up the world again, because that's the kind of franchise that carries... I don't think they've squandered all that away. Um, that is the but type of franchise close. that it's it's close. It's, it's close. You know, Revengeance and and well, like the arcade game and the mobile stuff you're talking about. Like it's it's close to being really watered down. But if they stop now and take that hiatus, it could still come back with that gravity of a movie franchise or something returning. It was it, that that could be Batman Begins. You know. And that, and that ultimately is what I want for it. Because of my love for it, I hate seeing the kind of running joke that it has become. Because there's still, you know, like we said about Metal Gear Solid 2, there's still excellent games. But I, I feel like Hideo Kojima had an idea for a story, and then he told the story, and then people were like, you gotta make more fucking Metal Gear games. And he went, uh, okay, so this also happened. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's kind of the George Lucas argument in that George Lucas went around for years saying that, you know, Star Wars Episode 4, 5, and 6 was always planned to be Episodes 4, 5, and 6, and I wanted to make 1, 2, and 3, but I didn't have the money or the technology to do it. No, you fucking didn't. You had no idea what happened in those movies, and you know how I know you had no idea what happened in those movies? Because I fucking watched episode one, and nobody who had any pre-planning would have turned out that shit on screen. <laughs> well. So, well. that being said, I don't actually feel like Hideo Kojima knows this entire story. I feel like it's kind of being made up as we go along, and for a franchise so steeped in its own mythology, that's not okay. It's, and it's, it's not going to turn out yeah, well. Yeah, it's become lost. Like, the show Lost Right. <laughs> I, well, it doesn't matter anymore. Homeboy's chilling now. He's not doing anything. He's chilling with the sunglasses, just, well, just hanging out. Yeah. No, he is, he is officially still on board. There has just been a redistribution of organizational responsibilities. Yeah, I, I heard in the means. new uh, Phantom Pain, he got the uh, snake of himself a stranger. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Wow. Well, all that kind of stuff aside, uh, that's a that's a heck of a choice, uh, Dan. So and it, it, uh, and it breaks my heart. It does. It does. But you know what? It's one. Of, I am not angry at Capcom because of Mega Man right now, because they'll make a new Mega Man game when they have an idea for a new Mega Man game. So no, I'm I'm angry because they had Mega Man World, and that was gonna be amazing. Unless it wasn't. I think Mega Man Legends 3 probably was going to be amazing, but, you know. No, those were both great ideas, and you know it too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's my first choice. I, it's a bold choice, I feel, but... But, you know, power to you, and, and I agree with it. I'm, ju I'm just su surprised and happy that you do too. Hmm. So I'll go next. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say about this one. Uh, but my nomination is uh, Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, came out in October 2005 for PlayStation 2. Came out in, uh, re came out in 2011 for PlayStation 3, and that is pretty much what this game needs. Is just that 
This game isn't a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination. There are lots of like camera problems, gameplay problems, but as a self-contained package, it's it is flawless as its own thing. Like its story, it's the experience of that game is a a very unique and very singular. It, it's it's its own thing, and like you were saying with the Metal Gear story, the story in Shadow of the Colossus has been told. Video games in general have, if it's successful, chances are it'll get a sequel. And Shadow of the Colossus was successful, and fortunately it exists in this Team Ico spiritual successor thing, where, like, Shadow of the Colossus is not a sequel to Ico, but it is a spiritual successor to it, as it were. And I have every confidence in the world that if The Last Guardian ever does release for a platform in our lifetimes, it will have little <laughs> to nothing to do with Shadow of the Colossus, uh, except for just being another Team Ico game and tied into it from that respect. But I look at something like this and I feel that it would just be a tragedy for somebody to try to shoehorn more story or more world into this experience because the vagueness of it was part of what made it so special. And, you know, I look at something like, it, it, from a gameplay perspective, it could be a good thing. Like, you could make a good game out of it. I, I liken it to Bioshock. Bioshock didn't need a sequel. It was a thing. It did not need to continue. But they made Bioshock 2, which is not a bad game. And it, it, it is very successful in a lot of ways, but... If it didn't exist, no one would miss it, because Bioshock existed. The sequel to Bioshock should have been something like Bioshock Infinite, which is not a sequel to it, it is a a successor to it in, in, in more of ways than a sequel, you know, like a storyline, straight point A to point B thing. Bioshock didn't need that, and you wound up with this completely superfluous, acceptable, but superfluous game in Bioshock 2. And I would hate to see something like that happen to a game like Shadow of the Colossus, or even Ico, for that matter, but particularly Shadow of the Colossus, because of its magnificence in the, taking the unique form of video games as a storytelling medium, and using the gameplay itself as the story. It has its conclusion. It's, it's wrapped up as in as much as you need it to be. Like, any vagueness in the characters and where they come from and the world and where you are and the Colossi, all of that stuff's vagueness is very intentional and explaining it further, I feel, would detract from it. So, I say that if anything is going to happen to Shadow of the Colossus, keep cleaning it up, you know, like they did with the PlayStation 3 one. This isn't like the Star Wars prequels where not the prequels, this, the original Star Wars movies, where cleaning them up and adding effects takes away from it. Because video games are inherently a digital thing, and something like this, which is, like, clearly broken in a lot of ways, <laughs> clean up that frame rate, you know, make the con camera controls a little bit nicer. You can continue to tweak this experience so that it can be experienced on new hardware and be introduced to new generations of players over time and not detract from it. Uh, as long as you do it tastefully. And I say, keep doing that. You keep trotting this game out every couple of years or so in a fancy, shinier version. You do that all you want. As long as it remains, this is Shadow of the Colossus and not a sequel. Nothing more. No new content. Just this as it is, and we're just going to keep polishing it until it's done. Until the skin comes off. Until the skin comes off. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I adore Shadow of the Colossus for what it is. And the idea of giving Shadow of the Colossus to a developer, um, now that Team Ico has, has done its thing with it and worked its magic, giving it then to a developer like Naughty Dog or Santa Monica Studios or somebody who actually knows how to make a game that actually functions well... <laughs> um, really seems like a great idea because Ico and Shadow of the Colossus, uh, especially the PlayStation 2 versions of those games, are, and I say this out of love, 
they're damn near unplayable. They're busted. The, the, uh, especially in Shadow of the Colossus, when the, the climbing of the Colossus you are fighting is so goddamn central to what is happening, yet it is almost a physical impossibility because of the controls and the camera. It's, it's a game that I've never finished. And the frame because rate, for Christ's sake. I like, you could actually see sweat beads forming on your PlayStation 2 from yeah. trying to render this Colossus while you're climbing it. And it it is it is a game that I want to to love more than I do, and I, I love it quite a bit, but I love the idea of it. You know, it, like I said, it's a game that I've never finished because I, I can't. I can't finish it because it's broken. And I think the idea of, you know, polishing that game up and really making it something special, it's one of those unique PlayStation experiences that I feel um, Sony is somewhat lacking in at times. Because they have this really unique experience, but it kind of sucks at the same time. Whereas you look at a Nintendo franchise, and the Nintendo experience is about as polished as you can get. You know, I mean, whether you love a Yoshi game or whether you love a Kirby game, those games play perfectly every time. No, and no matter what version of the game you're playing, Kirby on the Game Boy plays just as well as Kirby on the Wii U. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll agree with you in most instances. I can say that, like, if you, if Nintendo's going to farm it out, like they did with some of the Yoshi's Island games, like Yoshi's Island DS does not play as well as Yoshi's Island for Super NES, and uh, it, it, as much as I would love to give Nintendo that credit, uh, there's a lot of their, their farm-out projects that don't play that well, but I understand what you're you're going for there. Like, yeah, for the most part, you know, Pikmin 3 plays flawlessly. Pikmin 3 plays exactly as you want it to play, and because they have that, that level of quality control and that level of, I guess eagle-eyed just watching over their their products but that's one of the quintessential differences between nintendo and sony and one of the things that gives sony its character and the way that they wind up with some very different experiences than nintendo has like little big planet wouldn't exist on nintendo consoles and in some ways that's a good thing like i hate playing little big planet i love the idea of it but there's a lot of people that absolutely love playing it too but the the physics controls for platforming that never would have made it out the door at nintendo which no, they're terrible means, exactly they're terrible but you know there's other weirdo experiences that probably would not have been released because they're not that flavor, you know? So I, I think the weird flaws and stuff, like in games like Shadow of the Colossus and and even, you know, stuff like PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale or, or, or whatever, or even like you were talking before, the War of the Monsters, um, those kinds of experiences wouldn't have made it out the door from Nintendo. And those flaws in their designs are kind of like part and parcel with the, the PlayStation experience. It's it's always this kind of growing experience where and, and Sony has been far less reluctant to remaster their games than Nintendo, whereas like, you know, something like God of War they'll just tweak and throw an HD collection out there and that's a fantastic value, but when it came time for Nintendo to tweak an HDFI Wind Waker, they remade the whole goddamn game. You know, right. it's plays the same but they they retouched every piece of it so i don't know it's 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 a trade-off and and while I, I agree with the sentiment of what you're saying i the fact that team ico had the freedom to make that game you know without anybody interfering and saying well this is fucking broken they followed through on their <laughs> vision and for better or worse that's what it is and now that that is out now that that exists you know that's like it's it's kind of like it, I, I hate to liken it back to the George Lucas Star Wars movies, but the special editions didn't bother me when the regular editions were still available. You know, like he can mess with those movies all he wants as long as I can still go out and buy and watch the original versions. As long as he's not trying to say this didn't happen, this doesn't exist, this is the only way you can look at it now as my new definitive vision. 
As long as the originals would still be available, I would have no problem with any new stuff he wants to throw on there all he wants, because I always have that option. And with something like, you know, Shadow of the Colossus, like the way they remastered it for PlayStation 3, and there's no reason to go back to the PS2 version, but it doesn't detract from, like, the PS2 version's existence, you know what I mean? Right. Like, any changes they would do to it, as long as they do it with respect to the originals and continue to have the original version available. I mean, Christ, look at the Monkey Island remake. Like, that you can literally switch back to every flaw and problem of the original PC version. Um, not that there were many, it was, it was great, but it was done with such respect to the original product that you could literally swap back and forth. That That's the kind of progression that something like this would need to have in order to be acceptable. And unfortunately, Star Wars doesn't have that. But maybe it will <laughs> soon. Yay, Disney. Uh, Yay, so, Disney. Yes, Shadow of the Colossus. There, there's mine. Um, Sir Dean, what have you got for us? I abstain. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed. You're on the show. <laughs> Do it a damn well, please. That's, that's the whole point of the show, Dean. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Nope. Shut, shut, shut. I see your point, but I would still argue. Love for another. <laughs> anyway, uh, the game I wanted to talk about was Need for Speed. <laughs> Do I need to go any further? <laughs> Do I really, really need to say anything else? <laughs> Alright, let's, let's, can, can, let's go. Can you just say... Stuff. Do you, do you think they should hit the brakes on the franchise, Dean? <laughs> yes, in so many words, they should hit the brakes on the franchise. I mean, let, let's let's recap a little bit. Because there were some redeeming qualities at the end of the life of Need for Speed as a franchise. I don't believe they they have any plans to make a game. Uh, I, all right, they do, but it's like it's a unknown title as of right now. There's no, It's a working title, so we don't know what's to come of it, which is probably a good thing. Uh, when Heat for Speed started out, it was just like a racing game, like any other street, just sort of like a street racing game, a more closer to like Burnout, I guess you'd call it. And then Need for Speed Underground hit, and it was cool. Uh, but that game, that one single game, spawned an entire era of just ridiculousness and stupidity, and I hated every second of it. Just, I mean, if if we're going to go into it, first of all, Need for Speed Underground and Underground 2 came out in every fucking system possible. It came out on the damn Game Boy Advance. How the fuck <laughs> did they fit all that into the Game Boy Advance? Secondly, because just, let's, let's keep going a little more forward here. Why? Why? Just, why? And then, thirdly, there was so much just rap music. They just... They stuffed it full, and it wasn't good rap music. It was like, it was top 40 garbage. You know, I can only hear Get Low so many times <laughs> before I want to punch someone in the face. And I swear to God, I came close so many times. But you got to get that need for speed money, son. Let's, let's keep going. They thought it was a good idea. They were like, maybe we'll just rename it. We won't call it Underground anymore. We'll call it Most Wanted. It, it wasn't any fucking better. You know what they did? They added a story. Didn't make it any cooler. Didn't actually made it worse. It sucked. It was terrible. And they needed to stop there. I believe they made a... I want to say a Most Wanted 2. And then they made one after that as well. Which I don't know the name of. Because I don't give enough shits. Which... I, again, I love racing games. But you know what? I love real racing games. Like Forza and Gran Turismo. And to be honest, I even like the arcadey ones like Burnout. Burnout is a fantastic example of an arcadey racing game done correctly. Just Need for Speed shit all over everything I loved about racing games for a very long time. Keep fast forwarding though, they did something right. Uh, back on the PlayStation 2, they made a game called Hot Pursuit, which was before um, uh, uh, Need for Speed Underground. Well, they went back and did that on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, and damn it was that game good. Everything that I hated about the most wanted games, they said, well, fuck it, we're going to throw that away. It's a game about getting away from the cops, or you're the cops catching the people. It was fantastic. A game of cat and mouse 
put to a new extent where you could just unlock all these badass cop cars. Well, they weren't really cop cars, but they were just souped up vehicles made to look like cop cars. They put a lot of work into the design and everything. And it made me so happy to see this stuff. It was so great. And to be honest, they added a bunch of game modes. There were racing modes, but I mean, the, the cops would come in and try to crash on it and everything. Or you can go into the cop mode and try to take down the racers at the same time or take down a specific car that was like way faster than yours and you had to think of ways to try and get in front of them. It was just such a fucking cool game. And they did everything right with it. The mechanics were so good. And then they had the, um, the online competitor board where it would match you your times against other people that were close to you. So if you had a friend that did the, the race in, uh, let's say it was a short race, uh, a minute and 15 seconds. You had to beat a minute and 15 seconds. And if you did that, it would rub it in his face. It would literally send him a message and say, you suck, get back in the game, beat your friend again. And that was a really cool feature. It made for some rivalry. and It made the game that much better. After that, I think they fell off the face of this earth, and EA was like, listen, we got to ease back. No one's buying these games anymore, which, I mean, it was a very competitive market. You had Forza starting to be like, all right, guys, well, we got to sort of make some addendums here to the actual racing games that we do. So they came out with Forza Horizon, which was a direct competitor to uh, the Need for Speed, the burnouts and stuff. It wasn't as um, realistic as the the original Forza was. So it added a bit of fun to the game. And that worked really, really well for them. And I, I think that's what ultimately drove Need for Speed sort of into the hiatus it's in right now, which not terrible. The game really, really ran its course during the PlayStation 2 and early Xbox and PS3 era, and it needed to be given a rest. There was, I, ah, so many frustrated words about that game that I believe I said earlier, and I don't need to state them again. It's just, I'm happy it's done for now. Agreed. I would agree. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't there, wasn't there an iteration of Need for Speed where you could, like, get out of the car and run around? Oh, God, I hope uh, not. I feel like there was. Like, they started adding, like, those weird storyline segments and shit to it. Like, I don't know. I really stopped paying attention to that series after a while. Cause... But see, then they brought it back with Hot Pursuit to just simplicity at its finest. And it was so good. And if they stuck with that, like, I would have bought it if they released a game every three years. The problem was, like, they went from... Like, just so many. It was literally game after game after game. There might have been a time where they didn't even wait the full year to release another one at some point. I, I think it got that ridiculous at one point with just the amount of, like, shovelware shit they were trying to sh put in people's faces. There were... I, I had to say just maybe shooting for the stars probably six different Need for Speed titles on the Xbox 360. And I, I it, it it felt like there were six a year. Yeah, and you know that like I, I, from working at GameStop, it was frustrating to see people buy that game when I knew what a good racing game was. Because you had Burnout Paradise on the same damn console. You're gonna tell me Need for Speed was better than Burnout Paradise? You sir can go jump off a fucking building. That goes for anyone. I don't give a fuck. You, you you want to stop listening to the podcast because I think Burnout Paradise is better than Need for Speed? So be it. I love Burnout Paradise. That game was fantastic. If you want an arcade racer, buy that one. Go. It's on Steam right now for like fucking five dollars. Go buy it. Don't don't stop listening to the podcast. Go go buy the game. Go play the video game. You can listen to the podcast while you're driving an awesome car. Nah, I think Burnout's way better than Need for Speed. Just Burnout was amazing. But nah, you're you're. You're right. You're absolutely right. The Need for Speed <laughs> franchise is just like... I, I it, it just makes me shake my head at, some, at certain points. They just they just cranked those things out as fast as they could. All right, so that's our first round of games. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with our other choices. So stick around.
And we are back. So, we're going to do our other round around the non-existent room that we are not in, because we're in three different places. Dan, <laughs> kick us off. It was a hard choice to go with, with game number two. There's so many There's so many things that I want to stop. Like, I want Grand Theft Auto to stop. And I want Assassin's Creed to stop. I fucking want Candy Crush to stop. A whole lot. But the one... And Resident Evil, that should stop. The one that I want to stop the most, though, other than Metal Gear Solid, is... I... Look, I get it. I was alive during the 16-bit war. I understand that, you know, you put some red sneakers on a hedgehog, and he runs fast, and people love it. I get it. The game doesn't fucking work in 3D. It has never worked in 3D. From Sonic CD on, it has been shitty. Stop it, Sega. <laughs> Stop. For the for fuck's sake. Enough is, like, really. I mean, if you go back and look at the original Sonic games, I do not like them. I have never really loved the Sonic games, but I can appreciate them for the their their level design and the sense of speed and the enjoyment that could be derived from playing a Sonic the Hedgehog game. Once you move that franchise into 3D, it became an adventure game. And Sonic was never an adventure game. It was a memorization puzzle. You memorized your path through the levels and you got through it as quickly as possible. That was the whole point. That was what, that was what you were aiming to do. And in 3D, it simply doesn't work. You can give Shadow guns all you fucking want. That doesn't help. You can switch between different teams of characters. That doesn't help. You can give me a fishing minigame. I still don't care. Just let it go. Enough, Sega. We get it. You know what would be awesome? Make a new 2D Sonic game. Stop trying to do the shit in 3D. They tried that. It was called Sonic 4, and it did not work. Okay, give it to somebody who still knows how to make games. <laughs> they they did. There's all right. So first off, <laughs> see, I, I am talking with... out my ass somewhat because I don't <sighs> fucking play Sonic games, but I continue to see them coming out, and I just go, why? Why would you do that? I agree with you wholeheartedly that Sonic needs a fucking break. They need to stop trying to... Like, Sonic Boom is just an unmitigated disaster. <laughs> it just is. Uh, and most 3D Sonic games are just complete disasters. Sonic Adventure is, like, the only half exception. It's not a good game, but it was the right game for the time. Like, Sonic Adventure, when it came out on Dreamcast, was amazing. Because... Just because it looked amazing. That first level is still fun to play. Right. None, and I mean 0% of the rest of that game is fun to play. But it's, that it's... first level, when you're running away from the whale, is fucking cool. And it was the perfect thing for the time. It's the Jackson Pollock argument. <laughs> Jackson Pollock is a terrible artist. Just because he was the first one to f fucking throw paint splatters as a canvas doesn't make it good, just means he was the first. The early Sonic games... I would disagree with you that the purpose of them is to memorize it and run through the stages as fast as you can, because uh, they're one of the best things about the original Sonic games is the complexity of the level designs. You can run through those stages as fast as you can, but you're going to miss so much. There's secret stuff hidden very cleverly throughout the stages, and when I first played the games on Genesis, I didn't really realize it. And then later in life, actually, it was my wife who played through the original Sonic the Hedgehog. I watched her play it for the first time, and I was like, she's going slow, and oh my god, there's so much stuff here. And it was amazing to watch. And then I went back and replayed the original Genesis Sonic games, and it was a totally new experience for me, and I really appreciated them again. Sonic Advance, the three Sonic Advance games, now granted... Two and three, I think, uh, from rem remembering correctly, I didn't play a ton of them. Were unnecessarily difficult, but they were very good 2D Sonic games. Sonic Rush and Sonic Rush Adventure, I thought, were phenomenal games. More Sonic Rush than Rush Adventure, because Adventure tried to do some weird 3D-ish type things in it. But 
they were newer. They were for the Nintendo DS. They were newer 2D Sonic games, and they're great because they took some of the aspects of the original games, of the exploration and the level design, and they incorporated this new dash move so that you could run fast and not be... One of the problems with it, Sonic always ran into is that you would get this momentum going, but then something would pop up in front of you and you would lose all that momentum. So in Sonic Rush, they added a dash move where you would press a button while you're running and you could use that as a forward attack straight through enemies and then keep up that forward momentum. And they managed Run to design... Run faster. Exactly, but they man managed to design the stages and the exploration of those stages around that, where there was you were constantly running really fast to gain speed so you could go off a ramp and then launch yourself up to a different stage of the game, and then they would slow you down with smaller platforming bits and then lead you to somewhere else to run. Like The, the levels were designed intelligently, and that's what made it work. And then you had Sonic Colors for the Wii, which was a primarily 2D Sonic adventure game that involved some interesting power-ups called Wisps, and it was fun. And it didn't have as much of a J-pop butt-rock soundtrack that I <laughs> despise of the current Sonic games, of all modern Sonic games, and the fact that that music in Smash Brothers, oh, it just makes me want to throw up every time I hear it. It's just so terrible, because... When you think of the Genesis Sonic music, that was some of the best music the Genesis had to offer. And then Sonic Adventure comes out and it starts to change. Like, Sonic Adventure has some really great classic Sonic sounding tunes that are played using modern instruments. And then, like, Sonic Adventure 2 happens and there's fucking lyrics in the background and it's all about believing in your friends and following your dreams. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, stop, please. Stop. I just want to run fast. I just want to have a, I just want to have a neat physics-based platformer that works, and that's what I had on the Genesis and Sonic Four. So like it, it, it toyed with that aspect and then went, now nah, fuck, we're gonna do, we're gonna make this <laughs> episodic for some reason instead of just making a goddamn game. And I remember getting Sonic Four, and I liked playing the stages. I didn't mind the physics that they added to it, but like. You had a map with, like, four different stages. You can play in any any order you want. This isn't fucking Mega Man. Give me Zone 1, Zone 2, and Zone 3. Fight Dr. Robotnik, the end. You know, follow that thing that you have and don't get so caught up in the weird, creepy, furry mythology you've built up. And for fuck's sake, give it a rest. Like, you clearly can't do this. Sonic Team, you clearly can't do this. And then handing it off to other developers, which... Sonic Boom should have been an amazing success, but had a crazy, terrible development nightmare life cycle, and it was garbage. It It's just pure, unadulterated, straight-out-of-the-ass garbage. <laughs> it's just awful. And it's every time they put out a new Sonic game, if you read an interview with the developers, every single time... It's the same fucking interview that they've been giving for the last 15 years. <laughs> you know, and it, it and it just it goes a little something like this. Uh, so yeah, we're in charge of the new Sonic game. And yeah, all that shit that came before it, yeah, totally sucked. I don't even know why you played it, you fucking moron. It was obviously shitty. This game's going to fix all of it. And then the game comes out, and it didn't fucking fix anything. It's the same it, goddamn it's game. The We've same learned from our mistakes. Well, then, then they're like, well, we don't know what happened. Like, you just... We didn't get enough time, and I was like, what the, what the fuck is wrong with you? Don't promise all these things then. And don't annualize it, you know? Like, it's, it, other franchises have been successful because they don't annualize. They, there doesn't need to be a new Sonic game every year. When there was that gap between, like, there wasn't a new Sonic game on the Sega Saturn. So when Sonic Adventure came out, people were fucking hungry for it. They wanted that 3D Sonic that was the equivalent of Super Mario 64. They didn't fucking get it, but, you know, <laughs> it was an exciting time to see... They got a fishing minigame instead. <laughs> it was exciting to see Sonic come back, and, and Sonic Adventure still will always hold a place in my heart for being so exciting because of the Dreamcast's launch and that it had been so long, and to, to let it sit, marinate, really work on it, get some really talented people behind it, and make it work. I mean, it's possible to make something like that work in 3D. It, it, it's possible to make anything work in 3D, maybe. Or maybe you just 
do something like they did with Sonic Colors. Throw all the shit out the window and s see if something new sticks and actually do it with love and care, you know, and not what they did with something like Sonic Lost World, which is just like, we're going to be derivative of Super Mario Galaxy in all the worst ways and suck <laughs> instead of well, being fun. The the biggest condemnation I think you can give a, a, to, to Sonic the Hedgehog is that Sonic the Hedgehog originally held a place with Mario as a flagship mascot. Mm -hmm. And now Sonic the Hedgehog holds a place with Crash and Spyro. <laughs> Two mascots that a company let go and nobody gives a shit about anymore. And most kids don't even realize that Spyro and Skylanders is kind of the same world. Like, yeah. that is the level that he has fallen to. Yep. And it's just kind of a shame. You know, when when I can look back and say, you know, my personal favorite Sonic game is Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. I don't know what that says about me, and I don't know what that says about the franchise. But I don't think it's good. It doesn't say anything good about the franchise, but as a sidebar, that game fucking rocks. Yeah, that game is that awesome. That game's fucking dope, right? <laughs> that like, game's awesome, yeah. There's a Golden Axe stage. What more do I need out of life? That's awesome. So, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog, just... just just stop. Just take it, a nap. Or or give it to the take people. Take a dirt nap. Give it to the people who make frequency and amplitude. Give it to that developer whose name I can't remember right now, even though I think it's pretty obvious. Let them make a Sonic game. That's a game I'm interested in playing. Hmm. Harmonics. Yeah, there you go. Harmonics. There you go. Um. Give Harmonics Sonic, which sounds like a ridiculous idea. But actually go play Frequency or Amplitude, and then tell me I'm a genius. They're too busy with I other am. things. Well, um, yay, Rock Band. Yay. All right, good pick, Dan. Uh, all right, on to mine. Uh, mine is New Super Mario Brothers. Not Super oh, Mario. Please. It's fucking New Super Mario Brothers. That oh. series in specific, New Super Mario Brothers, has to stop. I, it, I agree. It needs to end. <laughs> All right. You know what? You know what game doesn't work with four players? New Super New fucking Super Mario, Mario Brothers. Brothers. Yeah, it breaks relationships. <laughs> it it oh breaks God. everything. It's it was a funny idea, um, but all right. Let me let me put something into perspective. I love Mario platformers like just they're insanely high regard highly regarded to me. Super Mario World was in 1991. Super Mario Land 2 was in 1992. And that was the last new 2D Mario platformer game, the Game Boy Super Mario Land 2. In 94, they did Super Mario Land 3, Wario Land, but that was the beginning of the Wario Land franchise. Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island was in 95, but again, not really a 2D Mario platformer. Kind of its own different animal spawned the Yoshi series. 96 releases Super Mario 64, which is now a brand new type of game. It's the 3D Mario game. And after that, you get Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, there was a handful of, like, the Super Mario Advance games, which was just re-releases of chunks of Super Mario All-Stars for the Game Boy Advance. And then in 2006, right? So now we're going from 1992 to 2006 is the next time we get a new Super Mario Brothers side-scrolling platforming game, which was the original new Super Mario Brothers for Nintendo DS. And that game fucking rules. The original New Super Mario Brothers I love to death because it was it was an evolution of 2D Mario platforming. They took they meshed controls from like it play it controlled a little bit more like Super Mario One to to an extent, you know, with the the physics of Mario, so it wasn't quite as sharp as Super Mario World, but intentionally so. Um it utilized polygonal graphics to make a 2D Mario game to make Mario's animations more fluid. They included aspects of the um, 3D games like the triple jump and wall jumping, and they incorporated them with a handful of neat new power-ups like the tiny mushroom where you could use that. It was difficult to play through certain stages with that, but you could unlock different exits that way. It wasn't as in-depth as Mario World's map, which is my favorite in Mario game is Mario World, but it was a unique evolution of 
the Super Mario Brothers franchise, and it was the first 2D Mario game that looked the way that it did. And that was neat. So, moving on past New Super Mario Brothers, then we get Super Mario Galaxy and 3D World and all that stuff, blah blah blah. But the next New Super Mario Brothers game is 2006. Uh, sorry, 2009, New Super Mario Brothers Wii. So I think, ooh, a sequel to New Super Mario Brothers. That could be a great thing. Holy crap, it's on a home console. Now I don't have to play it on a little tiny screen. I get a new home console 2D Mario game. I'm excited. And then I get my first look at it, and it looks exactly the same as the DS game. Same tile sets, same visual style, same art direction, same everything. It's just, it's a level pack. There's a handful of new, there's new stages, and they're good stages. There's some visual things they couldn't do on the DS because the Wii was more powerful than DS, somewhat. But when you're talking Super Mario 2 to Super Mario 3, or 3 to World, or even World to Yoshi's Island, like, there were significant changes between Mario sequels before this. 64 to Sunshine, you know. They, they were known for having leaps forward in creativity between game to game. And when I fired up that game and the music didn't change from the <laughs> DS version, it's the same music with different instruments? You have got to be kidding me. And I know that's one of the most successful games in history, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, because it was the right game at the right time on the right platform. But as a sequel to New Super Mario Bros., it was a huge disappointment. And I played through the game, beginning to end, unlocked everything, and it was genius in a lot of ways. But in just as many ways, it was a fucking letdown. Then, in 2012, you have New Super Mario Bros. 2 for the 3DS. Now, they announced New Super Mario Bros. 2 and New Super Mario Bros. U at about the same time. And I'm thinking, well, on their new platform, New Super Mario Bros. U... That looks pretty incredible, so I'm just going to skip New Super Mario Bros. 2, which having gone back and played some of it now, was the right idea, because guess what New Super Mario <laughs> Bros. 2 has? The same music, the same graphics, the same tile set, the same art direction. It had the neat gold thing going on to it, but it, was an, it felt like an expansion pack. It didn't feel like a sequel, and to add the number 2 on the end of it, screw you guys. No. Stop. New Super Mario Bros. U is, another, is the first legitimately great game since the first New Super Mario Bros. It has new graphics, it has uh, an augmented um, art direction to it, the, the backgrounds, the way that it utilizes like camera panning and stuff like that. It, it, it's smart. Uh, the way it expanded on the map screen as opposed to being like New Super Mario Bros. New Super Mario Bros. U had a lot more secrets and stuff hidden in the map screen. It kind of likened it a little bit more to Super Mario World with the hidden exits. It was the first proper evolution since New Super Mario Bros. But still, even with as much as I like New Super Mario Bros. U, which I think is the best 2D Mario game since Mario World, it's still very similar in this very kind of... Um, polished and, I guess, sterile art direction that New Super Mario Bros. incorporated, and I think it's time to stop. For two main reasons. Reason number one, you've taken all of the creativity out of the visuals of Super Mario Bros. That Starry Night level was amazing, but it was the only thing like that in the entire goddamn game. And number two, they're not fucking new anymore! <laughs> Don't call your game new, because it's only new when it's new. And now, if you go into a store and say, I want the new Super Mario Brothers game, the person behind the counter could legitimately say, well, do you want new Super Mario Brothers, new Super Mario Brothers, new Super Mario Brothers, or the actual new Super Mario Brothers? So do you want the new game or the new game? And that shit's fucking stupid. It's gotta stop. It's the worst naming convention since Wii U, and you've got to stop, Nintendo. I'm fucking begging you. But Chris, what, no what, what about the Super Luigi Mario one? New Super Luigi was DLC, so I'm fine with that. That was actually downloadable content. You, you down was, clown? It was legitimately DLC. And then they put it on a disc because why not? People are dumb enough to buy it, and they did. They for- buy the millions. They, they forced me to buy it. I went there to buy New Super Mario Bros. U, and they were like, this is all we got. And I'm like, I, I just, 
I just want the, the regular fine. one. <laughs> They're like, but it's, but it's you it comes with the, the the DLC. I was like, I didn't want the fucking DLC. Now I gotta chase this goddamn rabbit around all the fucking time. <laughs> Nobody and, likes Luigi. I no. Yo, new, I love new Super Luigi. Luigi U is great. It's a, it's a I, pretty I, good game. It grew on. I really like it because it's because it's not just like a level pack. They're all like, the time limit is down to 99 seconds for every fucking stage. So it's like right. you've got the totally different controls of like Super Mario 2 Luigi. So he's really floaty and slippery and he jumps totally different. And all the stages are clever, tough as nails and fast, which is what DLC for a Mario game should be. It was a level pack and it was never anything more than a level pack. But the sequels and this piece of it, especially after the insane creativity of stuff like Galaxy and 3D World, stop it with New Super Mario Brothers. I want you to take all the creativity that you used to have. The 2D Mario games were an event, you know? Like, Super Mario World was an event. Mario 3 was a phenomenon. That kind of stuff needs to come back to your 2D Mario games. They need to hold that level of gravity. And it's never going to happen again with New Super Mario Brothers because New Super Mario Brothers Wii was the casual success. As in, everybody who was a casual gamer was like, I get to play Super Mario Brothers on my Wii and then play some Wii Bowling and everybody's happy. Yay! But that's, that's not doing your brand the credit that you built for it over the years. Yeah, Wii Sports is the best-selling game of all time. It doesn't make it any fucking good. It's... I liked Wii Sports, but it's no not, sure. But yeah, it, like it, it, it's it is not a masterpiece of gaming. No, it's I, not. I, it's a masterpiece I think you, of marketing. <laughs> sure, I think you bring up a really good point though, because like you play the first Super Mario Brothers, you're a kid, you get a Nintendo, and you play this game, and you're like, wow, this is crazy. And then you get Super Mario Brothers two, and you go, holy shit, what is this? What the hell and just then, happened? And then you get Super Mario Brothers three, and again, your reaction is, whoa. Holy shit! What is this? And then Super Mario Brothers World, and you're oh my god, this is fucking amazing! And then you get new Super Mario Brothers Wii, and you go, oh, okay, this is cool. I and just then, played this. And then from then on there, it's been like, oh, there's a new Super Mario Brothers game. Uh, okay. So it went from holy fucking Moses to meh. It's out. I don't care. And that's not okay. And it's detracting from the legitimate holy shit exciting Mario games because New Super Mario Bros. Wii outsold Galaxy and Galaxy 2 combined and Galaxy 1 and 2 are I mean, you look at the like global rankings for those games those are some of the highest rated games in the last generation because they're they are goddamn masterpieces of video games Super Mario 3D Land for 3DS was that was as successful as it needed to be um, but that game is way better than New Super Mario Bros. 2, and I'm pretty sure New Super Mario Bros. 2 has outsold that game. Same thing with 3D World. 3D World is, is goddamn amazing, but it will never sell as well as New Super Mario Bros. Uh, U did, or especially as much as New Super Mario Bros. We did. And I think those games, being this kind of generic flavor thing that they are, or have a tendency to lean towards. Like, I don't want to detract from New Super Mario Bros. U because I think the game is brilliant. And I feel the same way about New Super Mario Bros. on DS. But if the other two, Wii and 2, did not exist, I feel like those two games would be way more impressive. Because if you had gone straight from New Super Mario Bros. DS to New Super Mario Bros. U, that would have been, first off, the time gap would have been perfect because it would have been 2006 to 2012. So there's your six-year gap between Mario games, uh, 2D Mario games, which is just enough time to really get a good hunger going for it. And the visual and style differences of the two of them would have felt like a proper sequel instead of these iterative changes that we got going from DS to Wii to 3DS to Wii U. And especially having New Super Mario Bros. 2 and New Super Mario Bros. U release in the same goddamn year, like a few months apart from one another, stop it. Just stop it. Anyway, Dean, close us out for the night. What you got? Guys, get your riot shields ready. I'm, uh, I'm gonna receive some flack for this. Let's do it. Pokemon. The just, Pokemans. Just... Remember when there used to be 150 Pokemon? I do. I, I do. write about it once a month. You know how many there <laughs> are now? 
a billion. Three hundred seventy-nine thousand two hundred ninety-two. Close. Seven hundred and twenty Pokemon. That's stupid. Yep. <laughs> yep. Let me. Let me. Let me. Since you guys are a little older than me, uh, I I've had a bit more of my childhood wrapped in Pokemon than you guys did. Uh, first game came out when I was in the fourth grade, so I was about like 10, 11 years old, and it was the greatest fucking thing ever. RPGs to me back then were an obscurity. They didn't make sense. They were too long. A lot of the times, you know, it, it was too, too many fucking words, not enough action. Throw in Pokemon, that is literally just RPGs for beginners. Greatest thing ever. Fast forward another, I think it was three or four years till they came out with Gold and Silver. I'm a little older, and I'm playing Gold and Silver, and it's great because I'm like, oh, new Pokemon. Look at that one. Look at this one. They're all different. All right. Fast forward a little further. Now, I thought it was my age, and uh, I when Ruby and Sapphire came out, I, I was 15, 16, and I was like, eh. That looks like a light bulb. That one looks like a bunny rabbit with a plus on his fucking ass. Um, <laughs> what are you? What are you guys doing? Why? Why do I have to? Why do I have to sit through a, a glorified dog show in the middle of the game? Like, why? Why are you making me do this? That is when I stop playing Pokemon seriously. And I, when I mean seriously, I mean like emphatically. Like you know, I'd I'd play that game to beat it because it was fun. It wasn't fun to me anymore. They're just there, there wasn't any reason to, and I, it made me a little sad because it was such a big part of, like, growing up and just being a kid and whatnot. Fast forward again. Um, many iterations later, they redid Fire Red and, um, uh, uh, and Leaf Green, which is red and blue originally, and then they went back and just recently did Ruby and Sapphire again. And I'm thinking to myself, have we come full fucking circle again? Like, don't don't leave out Heart Golden Soul, Soul Silver. Silver. Exactly. Like, why? Why? Just if if you can't think a new Pokemon, stop making the fucking games. You aren't improving the graphics. You just recently, just fucking recently. They improved the graphics with X and Y, and that was a big jump forward. I'm not going to lie. It was it was a welcomed addition. X and Y was a good thing. But all that shit in between, why? Like, we didn't need Heart Gold and Soul Silver. We didn't need Fire Red and Leaf Green. I mean, fuck. We barely needed Ruby and Sapphire at that point. Could have lived without it, to be honest. And then, you know, th the main reason... They release these games sometimes, or just for the fucking legendaries. You're releasing a new game with three more Pokemon. Like, are for real? Really? That's that's your big thing. Three extra Pokemon and a new region, which looks the same, to be honest, as the last fucking region. There's caves. There's beaches. There's fucking grass. There's uh, whatever, man. You know, how often do I see these legendary things? Which, not to mention, you normally can't get in the game. You have to go to some stupid fucking promotion. Reserve the dumbass game. Go to a fucking tournament. I don't fucking know. It's stupid. It's dumb. Stop doing it. But, but, but there's shiny Pokemon. No, fuck that. Shiny Pokemon? <laughs> the only reason they made those was to get you to play the goddamn game longer. If you're not cheating and you want a shiny version of a fucking Pokemon... Get ready to walk around in tall grass for the rest of your fucking life. And if it's not the color you want, too damn bad. Catch that Pokemon, because that's the only glimmering piece of hope that you have of getting something you actually wanted. Fuck that game. They need to stop making it. I don't care what anyone says. They've been doing it for too damn long and getting away with too damn much. The Pokemon company is essentially just re-releasing shit over and over again now. I mean, we just said uh they, they did fire red leaf green that's a remake heart gold soul silver that's a remake omega red and omega ruby and uh what, what was the other uh, alpha sapphire alpha, alpha sapphire Th that's three fucking remakes why why they, they didn't need to be there they didn't add anything to it the only one that had a significant like upgrade was the um the the fucking ruby one uh, that just came out where they updated all the graphics i mean each of them the graphics were sort of upgraded, but was it necessary? 
Not really, man. To be honest, you guys can fight me on it all you want. I know there's diehard Pokemon fans out there. And to be God honest, I appreciate you guys because brand loyalty is something I don't have. I will turn around <laughs> and bite a motherfucker's hand if a game sucks. I have no qualms about doing that. Because to be honest, you got to keep your game strong, man. Like, you, you got to keep your shit fresh. If it's not fresh, what's the point of, like, fucking doing stuff? If I just go out and buy the next... Uh, God of War game because it just says God of War on the cover, man. I'm not doing anything to make that company do justice to the title. I'm just feeding them fucking cash like the people who buy Call of Duty. There's nothing different every year, man. Zombies, whatever. It's not a new story. It's just you, people don't even play for the story. They buy because it it's a fucking multiplayer game. It's sad and it's sad to see that some of these companies aren't trying anymore. Pokemon was an amazing thing when it first came out. I mean, there wasn't anything else out there like it. And just, it's, I'm not saying it's gone downhill, but they, it's just, they don't put enough effort into it anymore. And I, I gotta say, when they did X and Y, I was, I was excited, I was pumped. Then they did X and Y 2, and I was like, this is going the way of Final Fantasy. I don't, I don't like this. And then they did Omega Red and, uh, fucking Alpha Sapphire, and I was like, ah, we're back at square one again. So, <sighs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I, that, I agree. Yeah, you know, that, that rant, it, some people aren't going to like what I have to say, but look, my personal opinion, if you guys like Pokemon, more power to you. That's cool. It's a great game, especially for young kids to get into RPG games. It's RPG light. It's, it's good for that. And the fact they keep making them is cool, but can you freshen it up a little bit? I mean, I'm sure you can ask other people out there to give their opinions about the game. And I'm not the only one who wants a little bit of change. There's got to be some mechanics that are due for an update. You know, I really, am I the only well, one? There's, there's, there's just, there's this really interesting thing I think that exists within the Pokemon games is that you're right. Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue. It's been the same game every time since. The, the, the fucking name of the tree has changed that they call the professor it's been oak and elm and ash and the american white oak and fucking bonsai and whatever the fuck else i don't mahogany. know a lot of trees <laughs> professor mahogany he's my favorite i don't know shit about trees but when you look at where there are some obvious avenues that the pokemon games you would think that they would go down something like a console version of an RPG, or an MMO, or some sort of other thing, and they don't do it, yet there exists a thing like Pokemon Snap, where it's like, hey, go around on rails, we made an on rail shooter, but instead of shooting Pokemon, you're shooting Pokemon pictures. Well, at least that like, was fucking trying. <laughs> but, but no, it's not. That's not trying. That's not trying at all. That is... That is simply milking the teat of the Pokemon franchise. There there was no effort put into that sort of thing. Pokemon Coliseum is the same thing. It's like, oh, instead of walking around, you just battle. That's the only thing. Po there Pokemon is... Stadium was such a sellout. That that game was, oh, That whole series, Stadium, Coliseum, all that was a sellout. I, I will give some reluctant credit to Pokemon Snap, because when that came out, I thought it was a complete pile of garbage, but... There's, it's got this weird cult following to it, and and I, I kind of get it. It's just, it's a strange experience, is what it is. And it's, no, sure, it's sure. something different. But, but you know, it's just the the fact that you know, I think Dean brings up a very good point. The fact that Call of Duty gets so much shit, or even look at a game like Madden, where it's like, oh, it's the same fucking game every year. So is Pokemon. But Pokemon's allowed to get away with it because they add a new Pokemon. What's your starter going to be this year? Uh, his name's Asholia. And he changes into Asholiax and Asholia Exterix. And that's it. And it just looks like a giant ass. His ass just point. gets fatter and all he does is twerk. That's it. He just gets a bigger fucking ass. And it, like, it's, it's stupid at this point. They're out of shit. Like, you just, you're out of ideas. It, it, you know, <laughs> like, like you said. Why does that one look like a light bulb? I don't know, because we haven't fucking made a light bulb one yet. Like, that's about the extent of where Pokemon is at this point. And it's a shame, because it absolutely was RPGs for beginners, and it was a brilliant thing at one time. It 
it got a whole generation of kids into a genre of games or into video games kind of as a whole. And it's just, it has become derivative of itself. And it's almost, it's almost like it's making fun of itself at this point. Like, like you can catch a shiny Pokemon. That was your thing? That's your big, your big deal? Play this game for a while and you can get a Pikachu that's silver. Eat a dick. No. I'm not gonna. <laughs> so, alright. Like, alright, I've got two things to say here. Thing number one is Game Freak kind of fell into this trap, which I think was the, their biggest problem with their first sequel to Pokemon, was that the trap they fell into was that the definition of a new Pokemon game was, like, a hundred new Pokemon. They didn't need to do that. They made 151 goddamn characters. Like, <laughs> make a new game involving those characters. Like, you don't need to keep inventing 100 new species. Maybe add, like, five each time. But or ten! Yeah, just... Ten just would have been okay. Do Make those new ones special, and then continue to make the old... Have the old ones be as special. You don't need to... We didn't need to get up to 700 and some odd different species of Pokemon. We just didn't. Like, the focus of the sequels should have been more placed on making them, like, sequels, as opposed to half the problem is coming up with these dumbass Pokemon that are like, this one's a tire, because, I don't know. <laughs> there probably is a fucking tire. Like, there probably that's is. the worst part. There's probably a fucking tire Pokemon that they're like, oh, this one you put on a car, and he drives around with the car mon and fucking, there's an engine mon and you just turn him with the key Pokemon. I'm like, you know what? Fuck yourselves, you stupid fucking game. The other trouble that I see with all this is, is that Game Freak, when left to, to their own devices to do something different, they make some really cool games. Like, um, Drill Dozer? It was great. That was a great Game Boy Advance game. It was a very cool, unique platformer, and we'll probably never get a sequel because it didn't sell well. Because the art style was very strange, the box was weird, and they didn't, like, really hammer home from the creators of Pokemon, because it had nothing to do with Pokemon, but... Boy, if they had highlighted that, if more people played that game, I think it would have done really well for itself. And even Didn't more he recently, look like it, a clown? it was actually oh, a I girl, think. and yeah, it kind of looked like a clown. It was just like yeah, some, you couldn't really tell what the weird. hell was going on there. It was just very strange. But even more recently, which I I think I spoke about on the show uh, back when I first played it, was Harmonite on 3DS, uh, the eShop. Oh, that was a great that, game, man. That game's fantastic. It was kind of like. Bits of Endless Runner co combined with some uh, uh, rhythm elements and just really cool new character design. Great boss battles. That was from fucking Game Freak. That was the people who make Pokemon. Like, these guys need to step out of that box more often. They need to make fewer Pokemon titles and more stuff like, like Pulse Man. Like, they need to get out and, and stretch those muscles because when they do... They make really interesting new stuff, and instead of making more new Pokemon characters, like... Well, you know, th fix the damn story! Why does it need to be a Team Rocket fucking group taking over the world? Why does it always gotta be that? Like, w you know what? There can't be that many fucking groups out there that want to take over the world. The world is only so big, and these all take place around the same fucking time. How many groups can want to do the same exact fucking thing. It's stupid. It's fucking dumb. Magma, lava, flare, rocket, fucking uh, toilet, whatever, man. I, why? Why? <laughs> team, dude, don't fuck with Team Toilet. <laughs> no, seriously. It's a bad time. They want to flush those, all the Pokemon down the toilet. It's terrible. Those bastards are shitty. You know, but that's what I'm saying. Oh. Like, wh where? Oh. Yeah, I know. Bad, bad joke. Low but hanging fruit. It's 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 all good, Dan. It's fine. But I mean, why? Why? Just every time did they have to do that? It's it's not necessary. Your rival. Why do you need to have the same rival that you fight at the end of the game every time? Why? You know. And again, X was starting to deviate from that path just a little bit. Instead of a rival, you had a group of people that you you hung out with, you had friends and everything, and they all sort of did different things, but you you battled each one of them at some point, which was cool, because you didn't know which one was going to end up at the end. And then there was DLC for it, too, which, I mean, Pokemon game with DLC? 
Something new. Okay, fine. I'll buy it. While, again, not the biggest story ever, it was something different, which I can appreciate. There was there was a dungeon. You had to go through it. Well, whatever you want to fucking call it. New, new area or whatever. It had a different thing. You had to catch a legendary Pokemon, but at least it wasn't. It just showed up at a goddamn event. Some dude in a <laughs> way too tight shirt and a really, really impressive looking badge was like, well, well, I guess you're here, so I'm gonna give you this Pokemon. No, it was it was it was better than that. They they actually did something to made you work for the damn prize for once. You know? That made me happy. Again, I don't know if it that's gonna really pan out. It doesn't seem like it will because we just got the same shit with fucking Alpha Sapphire Ruby. Whatever. Yeah, they're they're not gonna stop. But let's. I'm let's really just hoping say, they remake Pokemon Leaf Green. Shut up. Yes. Man. Yes. <laughs> it's like the Resident Evil remake remake we mentioned last week. <laughs> I love it. I just gave uh, myself a stomachache. <laughs> so yes, Pokemon, be better. We insist. Uh, no, just go away. Just go insist. away. <laughs> go away and eventually come back and and be better. You and New Super Mario Brothers and Sonic can all go pound. You can all drive a car from Need for Speed Underground and go off a bridge. <laughs> right off a cliff. Solid Snake will drive. Into a Colossus. <laughs> <laughs> Tying it all together. Nicely done. All right. <laughs> wow, wow, that was a that was a heck of a passionate episode. Uh, well done, guys. <laughs> um, so before before uh, I ask Dean to kindly do the thing, uh, I want to point out that next week, on April 4th, at Woodbury Heights Community Center is South Jersey Geek Fest, and we are going to be there. Head over to sjgeekfest.com for more details. Uh, but if you want to see us do a live show, we're going to do our trivia show next week instead of the following week, because we want to do it live. We want to do it in front of people, and we want it to be more fun than usual. So... Next Saturday, that's Saturday, April 4th, at Woodbury Heights Community Center, South Jersey Geek Fest, right here in South Jersey. Uh, come on out, see what we look like. You didn't even tell them the best part. Screaming. They could be on the show. They could be on the show. We are going to have a, a, a couple of rounds where we incorporate some audience participation. So if you want to compete against, uh, I will say us, but I will still be hosting. So if you want to compete against Dan, Tiff, and Dean in video game trivia type stuff. Your opportunity awaits. Uh, so check it out. Bring it, Dean, bitches. do the thing. I don't know if I can. I've spat so much venom tonight. Alright, cool. If you liked what we uh, were talking about, which I'm sure you didn't because I'm sure you guys are all fanboys of one game or another that we spoke of and you're still listening, <laughs> uh, check out the show notes. I swear to God, we won't spit such venom ever again. I, no, I can't promise that. I'm sorry. That's not even kind of true. <laughs> uh, but it, If you're a fan of what we talked about, but feel like you should reevaluate your life choices, check out the show notes. Most definitely. Uh, everything will be listed there that we talked about, just game-wise and whatnot. We also will have all our uh, social links listed and a list of the shows we will be going to this summer. Believe me, we'll be at a lot of fucking places. We, uh, we're spreading ourselves a little thin, but it'll be fun. At least once a month, we'll be somewhere. It'll be great. You can high-five us. Uh, so yeah, check out the show notes. It'll be great. Sweet. Great. Good call. Great, great. With all of, yes, with, with all of this fun, fancy-full in information, we're gonna call it a night, because it's way too late, and some of us need to be up early for no goddamn reason. So... Everybody, thanks for listening. Uh, join us next week, like I said, at the South Jersey Geek Fest, and then the week after we'll jump back and do our games of February, uh, sorry, of March, because I know I have a game that I am just itching to talk about. I can't wait to talk about it. Uh, I had a really good, I had, had a really good gaming month in March. So, anyways, uh, thanks everybody for listening, and we'll see you again soon. John's room that just started talking. <laughs> <laughs>
I need to extract this before it wakes him up. Hold on a second, guys. <laughs> oh, Dan, I shit. think Chris has poltergeist. Hey, Dean. Dan? Dean? Is Dean? everyone gone? Am I alone? Oh, no. I am alone. Why? Why would this happen? I've done nothing to deserve this. Uh, I swear to God, in all that is holy, I would throw this book away if he didn't love it so goddamn much. It's based on some creepy, I mean fucking creepy as shit, British cartoon, live action, I don't know what the fuck it is, called In the Night Garden. Oh, yeah. Holy shit, that I sounds this terrible. Book. It it's... is like this blue sock and this creepy Teletubby looking thing. Everyone looks drunk. And it's just the most vapid, worthless. I'm looking at a page that just says Maka, Paka, Aka, Waka, Mika, Maka, Moo. I, yeah. There is Found zero the title for redeeming the book, quality. For the show. <laughs> <laughs> zero redeeming qualities in this drivel. And I, I don't know why it just turned itself on in the middle of the night right next to his crib. But I heard it over the monitor, and I yanked it out of the room, and here we are. Play with me. <sighs> God, I hate that thing. Do you want to play a game? Nah, book. I do not. <laughs>